Hi, this is Gary with MacMost Now. On today's episode, let's take a look at Spotify. So Spotify is a music service I've been using as an alternative to purchasing music on iTunes. And a lot of people have been asking me what it's about, how it works, and why it may or may not be better than using iTunes. So let's take a look. So Spotify is an app that you download. It's a free app to download and then you have to sign up for an account as well. The basic account is free and I'll go over the different types of accounts in a second. But once you're in Spotify here you can basically search for music. So you can search for a group that you like, uh, say Rolling Stones, and then you can get search results. You can get uh, go right to the artist page. You can look at different albums, and of course, you can double click on any song to stream it and listen to it. So basically, you can stream and listen to any type of music you like as long as it's on Spotify. And somewhere between 50 and 90 percent of all music is on Spotify, depending upon how you count it. Uh, I find plenty of things not on Spotify, but also a lot that. I like that is and some groups I'm discovering by just exploring around and searching and looking at things like related artists uh, and such and uh, just looking at some of their suggestions for new music uh, as well. So there's a lot you can listen to and it's at this level free and it just streams and it's available on your Mac as an app. Now the way to get it inside of an account as you may have guessed is to go to Spotify.com. Now when you're there you can see the different types of accounts. So I've been talking about the free account and the way things are paid for there is through advertising. You can sign up for a $5 a month account and that gets rid of the advertising. But both of these two accounts have the restriction that you can only play music on your Mac and you can just stream it live from the internet. If you go to the $10 a month account then things get really interesting because not only can you play music and stream it from your Mac but you can also play it on your iOS device through a free app available for the iPhone or iPad. The other thing you can do with that premium account is you can create a playlist. Playlists are pretty much like they are on iTunes. You can create them and then drag music to them. So you can create a playlist and then in that playlist you can click Available Offline. What happens then is the music downloads to your Mac and it's stored in the app. And then if you're not connected to the internet, say you're on an airplane or you're out in the country and you want to listen to music, if you've made it available offline and waited for it to all download, you now have it available to you. So you can listen to music offline when you have no connection to Spotify or the internet. So now here on the iPhone I've run the app and I can do all the same things here. So I can just search for something uh, in artists or I can search for a song. Uh, maybe if I've got a weird craving uh, to listen to a song while I'm out I can just search for it here and it will then find it for me in Spotify. Um, I can also go to playlists and I can see the same playlist that I have on my Mac. It will sync across because you're using the same account. And I can go to a playlist here and hit Available Offline and this is while I'm connected to the internet and it will start to download each of the individual songs. And now I can see here that I've got uh, a few albums already set that they've got that little green arrow next to it uh, showing that I have uh, that available offline and I can listen to it uh, even if I don't have a connection. It's worth doing sometimes even when you think you may have a connection because you don't have to worry about uh, the cost of streaming if you're on a uh, restricted plan uh, with your provider. You can just play the music and it will stream it uh, from your local cache of those songs. So the biggest problem with Spotify is it's only as good as its catalog. So you're going to find things not available in the catalog. You're also frustratingly going to find things that are available in some countries but not in others. And of course this is all due to licensing. Uh, in some cases you'll find compilation albums or soundtracks that have some songs available and others not. There's also some artists that apparently have a delay. So you'll find a new album comes out and you'll find that it's available immediately on Spotify. And then other times it seems to be about six months later that's available on Spotify. But you have the ability to go and get the free trial and then look at it in the app on your Mac and see what's available. See if your favorite artists are in there or other ones you're considering uh, purchasing in the near future. And that can help you decide whether or not it's worth going to premium level. Of course at 10 bucks a month it doesn't have to be too much on there for it to make it worthwhile. Pretty much one album a month that you get on Spotify rather than purchasing in iTunes make it, makes it all worthwhile. And then using some of their discovery features and some of their social media features you may discover new artists through Spotify that you may not have found otherwise. There are also radio stations on Spotify which make it similar to Pandora in that respect except that you're listening to music that's available on Spotify so you can then stop and then go and listen to the entire rest of the album or more songs by that same artist if you like. 
Another drawback to Spotify is you don't get the feeling that you own the music. Uh, ownership levels have gone down since you know purchasing the album or CD and then purchasing the digital music in iTunes. And now with something like Spotify, you're kind of like subscribing to the music. Uh, but if that kind of thing doesn't bother you, it certainly may save you some bucks to do it this way. So go take a look at Spotify and see if it's something that can fit with you and how you listen to music. Till next time, this is Gary with Mac Most Now. Want more video tutorials? Just go to MacMost.com, click on the Videos link at the top of the page, and then you can view all of the hundreds of MacMost videos by category.